and a warm welcome to Kite Builders, your YouTube channel from Kite Flyers for Kite Flyers. Today I have the big honor to welcome a couple of Kite Flyers here on Fainir, which is well known on all Kite Festival in the whole world. Because wow. they are great Kite Builders, they do an amazing job. So I'm very, very curious today to talk with these people. Welcome to you, Elie and Shula Shavit here on Fainir. Thank you very Thank much. You. We are honored to be here and we are very pleased to be here. You are from Jerusalem, from yes. Israel. Kite flying in Israel. I have never been in Israel, so how can I imagine kite flying in Israel? Is there a kite scene, kite clubs? Uh, unfortunately, no. Not really. In fact, single line kite flyers and kite makers are very, very few. Probably not more than five or six people in the whole country. The whole country. Yeah. If I may be so, if I may say so, we are at the top of the top in Israel. Not only in uh, Israel. <laughs> Thank you. That's why we come and, to you. Uh, but there is a lot of activity, bugging yeah. and kite surfing. Kite surfing. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. we don't take part in that. We are too old for bugging oh. and kite surfing. <laughs> But uh, as I said, in one line, there's hardly any activity at all, very few kite flyers. We try to meet as much as we can on the beach, have our own small kite festival or kite uh, meeting. But other than that, we take consolation in the fact that we go to kite festivals and kite events around the world. Mm. But that will be the next question, Shula. Are there any kite festivals in Israel? The only small kite festival that's going on since 1985 is in the Israeli Museum in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. it's, but it's a worse place to fly kites <laughs> because it's a sculpture garden, okay. a lot of lamps. But when they started, it was a more open area. And it's sort of a tradition now. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows about it. It, uh, in summer, when children are free to go into the museum, mm. they don't have to pay, so I think the mother take all the neighborhood with her, mm. and, <laughs> they, and they are coming over there. Uh, I want to add to Ellie that what's also popular, very popular in Israel now, it's the children that they build the small kites. Mm -hmm. This it goes, uh, it's good for summer camps, activities at school, small kites, especially um, sled, like a sled that you have, uh, I saw in uh, your uh, club. Yeah. So this is, uh, but uh, serious kites are here and there when one municipal or kibbutz, mm. they, when they uh, organize something small that they don't have uh, permission from the municipal mm. or um, bring some guards to take care of the who is coming in. So this is, but nothing that continues. Yes, no. And another thing that I want to say to add to Ellie is it, it was very popular when we were small. Mm -hmm. When we were kids, we used to make our own kites. Mm -hmm. When spring and summer came, was a, I saw here that you have a, what we call canes because that was the kite that we made out of uh, so the bamboo and, the, um, and paper, the hexagon that, kite. That would be the next question. Also, even if there is not a dedicated kite scene in Israel, uh, do, do you have an original Israeli kite? That what we, uh, we didn't uh, dig in the history. Mm. I, I think always we say that we must find somebody that will go over books, and, uh, but we didn't have the time or the energy to do it. But I can say that it's a traditional kite. Mm -hmm. The hexagon, the hexagon, how you yeah, say the it? the hexagon, the equilateral Equi or equisided hexagon, six-sided hexagon. Mm -hmm. And uh, we think that it uh, must came uh, from uh, Arab countries. It was probably introduced by the Muslims or the Arabs. Mm -hmm. I don't know way back when, but uh, it, this is the typical kite that we grew up with. Actually, this was the only kite we knew when we were kids. Mm. We didn't know, didn't even imagine that there could be other shapes of kites, you know, and, different shapes of kites. And we saw in books, you know, the, the, uh, the diamond mm. uh, shape. And even we used the name for the kite, we used the Arabic name, that they call it Tayara. 
Tayara. It means kite and aeroplane. It means something that flies, sort of. So if you say somebody will say, oh, I used to build kites when I was a child, you will say, I built a Tayara. I used to make Tayara when I was a little, when I was a kid. So we see it as a traditional Israeli kite. And the other thing that it, when 1985, as I said, the first um, festival in the museum that we participate, and mm-hmm. when we came with the Delta, it was um, the amazing. amazing. Modern, no, modern no, kite nobody nobody knew what it was. Actually, they, they thought that we bought the kite in a kite store mm. abroad or something, and they couldn't believe that this is a real kite that we made ourselves. And it flies so nice. Mm. So uh, this was totally new. So 1985, was, was this the year where you felt in love for, for kites? Yes. Well, actually... Hey, no, okay. we came back. <laughs> again, this, fall in love again, you can see. This is the year that we restarted or rekindled okay. our so love. So when, when, when does it start? When that was, the start was as we said, that as a children yes. in the 50s, I... but Ellie grew in Jerusalem, I in a city by Tel Aviv, so I mm-hmm. was closer to the, to the sea, sea. Mm-hmm. and Ellie had uncle and aunt in the same city, so he spent the summer of there. Mm. So he came and we built, it was very, almost everywhere, people were building these kites, and go to the, to the beach. You could see the shows of Israel were amazing. It was always a, a lot of kites you can see in the air and this uh, shape, unless they bought from somewhere the diamond shape. But no, they, as far as I can remember as a kid, I always made kites in the, in the summer, in the spring, always, always, actually almost up to the end of high school. Mm-hmm. I was still making kites, this hexagon, the tayara. Mm. Then, Army and university and family old. and we sort of got out of it and we did rediscover the passion actually in 1983 when we were in a kite in a gift store shop in Sacramento, California. Okay. And we walked in and we stood like this. <laughs> we, It was a gift shop, but it carried mainly kites. Mm-hmm. And these were kites that I've never seen before. There was box kites and cellular kites and deltas and everything you can think of. Fiber car- uh, carbon fiber uh, sticks, fiberglass, materials that I, I knew existed from my days in the university, but I never dreamed that they could be used for making kites. Mm-hmm. And we very much wanted to buy a kite. And I think it was like a cellular kite and $200 or something for the kite. And I said, that's too expensive. Let's buy a book. Mm-hmm. Because uh, we know how to do things with our hands. And we, if we have a good book, we can always make a good kite. So we got the David Pelham. Yes. Book of kites. Later, found out that this is the, the Bible of yeah. kite flyers. <laughs> right. <laughs> And we started to play or to make kites, various kites. We, it was Shola and myself and the kids who were at their early teens those years. And in 1985, we had the first event at the museum. And after appealing to the judges, because as I said, they thought the, our kite was a commercial kite, we got a very nice trophy. And this is what boosted our passion, or mainly our children's passion, and encouraged them to continue with this whole hobby of kites. And it became a hobby, maybe more than a hobby, maybe more passion, passion, yeah. passion yeah. or kite crazy. I don't know what, the whole family, it's Shula and myself and two boys and the girls, everyone. Kite crazy, whole family. Kite crazy, yeah. the whole family. And they, from this book, and we were looking for more books, mm-hmm. it was only very old a book in Hebrew, so mainly it was uh, English. And when order... then we found about the magazine, we got the Drachen uh, mm-hmm. magazine. And the Kite Lines kite at lines, the time, uh, and American Kites, and mm. we used to buy books from, from the magazines. Get usually at the end of the magazine. Information as possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it, <laughs> and again, it was, um, it was more events uh, yeah. with kites. And uh, all you can see, 
every weekend on the beach you could see uh, people are flying kites. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, and then they even open a kite stores in Israel that we don't have anyone uh, now. Mm -hmm. But uh, so that's how it was popular that here and there you can find a kite store. The, I don't know if the biggest, but one of the main store was on the beach in a city called Herzliya, again, not far mm -hmm. from Tel Aviv, on the beach. And the lady was in 1992, she was in Dieppe, France. Okay. And she met some uh, <laughs> famous some kite very flyer. famous kite flyers, and she was really impressed. And she decided that she wants to do kite festivals in Israel, mm -hmm. international uh, kite festival. And she invited the uh, five six uh, kite flyer from the uh, Peter Lin. Uh, um, George Peters, Peters was there, <laughs> Modegi San was there, Raoul, Michel Grissier was there, Raoul yeah. Fosse from Belgium. So. So you, you had a lot of information, um, you start building your kites yourself. Today you are most famous for your patchwork. So, so how does <laughs> this shift happen it's from from using the, the plans from books and, and publications over to your totally own style? Uh, I would say it was a, for us it was very natural. As they say, necessity is the mother of all inventions. Our main problem was getting spinnaker and uh, you, when we started playing from the from David Pelham book we would work with cotton and with plastic sheets and like the nylon taffeta or the material that they make uh, umbrellas out of and when we would get some our hands on some spinnaker we would cherish it and we would have to use it all the way don't don't even the little pieces don't waste anything And at that time, Shula was already a quilter. She was already doing okay. patchwork. Okay. Not with spinnaker, with cotton, and doing blankets mm -hmm. and wall hangings and all that. And it occurred to us that patchwork could be a very good way to use every little piece of material we can get our hands on. Now, I know we do what many kite flyers don't do. We mix different types of material, but this is, again... Because we had to use every little piece we had, so even if I had two types of spinnaker, I would still use them. And because we do patchwork with a lot of sewing and many seams, it, it, it's okay. It doesn't uh, affect the behavior of the kite. We got encouraged by, I think the first time we saw Janneke. Janneke, Janneke from, from Holland. From Holland mm -hmm. she, who, told, who did, saw her fly some kimonos that were patchwork. Mm -hmm. And she said that she was actually inspired by joy by scott skinner okay. and then we met scott and we got his encouragement and approval <laughs> mm. that yes. this is the direction we should take okay no, I, i i i told and the rest is history yeah, i said to ellie i said to ellie if scott is doing patriot the low cabin yeah. it was yeah. i said oh i'm the expert <laughs> so I, i don't know if i know better but i think <laughs> i have more i'm more experienced so yeah. let's say yes and uh, Okay, again, it was, uh, I don't know why, but it's sort of men's hobby. Mm -hmm. And I was, uh, when we started going uh, to kite festival abroad, mm -hmm. I was among the... Shula was a sort of a strange stranger, bird, yeah. one, one lady I mean, with all the... Especially making uh, kites, mm. not coming with Ellie, you know, as his okay. wife, but making, be a, a team and being making kite kites. Maker. So mm. I said, uh, let's find something that will be special. We know mm -hmm. how to build a kite. So let's put more effort and time in the sale. And, um, and we have many, I can, we can choose many techniques. And, uh, yes, and what's, you, what's your favorite patchwork design? I think the log cabin. I lock think cabin? that uh, I, I, we I like to After play all the years and trying many different uh, types of uh, styles of patchwork, I think log cabin, because I think it's the most versatile of all. Mm. Because and I make, you, you, you use something very simple and create very complicated and very intricate designs with it. Mm. And especially that you can, I like the rainbow colors and with a touch of black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, again, I can do like uh, the same squares, 20, 50, and then the way that you arrange it, you, 80 get, blocks sometimes. you get the design. <laughs> so, so especially with lock cabin, you, you can create very complicated. Yes, yeah. with a very so, simple uh, block. 
the, yeah. the simple block, but very complicated yeah. designs. So how do you design the design or how do you plan the design? Okay, <laughs> the, well, the, there are several stages in the process of coming up with the design. First of all, we have to have an idea what what shape we want the, the sail to be. And then what uh, we do, we start playing, even though this is the computer age, I still work with graph paper and a pencil. We start playing with a graph paper or a you know, square or markers and we color by hand and we see what we like. What we do almost every time, we would send by mail or by photo to our children and our grandchildren right. what we want to do. When we say and that we... it's a grandparents camp, <laughs> so everyone... <laughs> okay, <laughs> this, this is the shape that we want. Now start filling it with color. Okay. <laughs> and uh, not once, not twice, we eventually chose a design that was, was uh, thought up by one of our grandchildren. We, we vote. Okay. Yes, yes. So I, the, uh, the whole family the is family. involved. The yes, whole family the is involved and takes yeah. part in the, the, in the decision and making and, and planning of, of, of the kite. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, they must give their blessing for the <laughs> shape and the colors. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and they are, are talking about involved. Yes, they are in Israel. They are coming uh, with us to fly kites and they have their own. Every um, child, when he married, he got a kite for his mm -hmm. um, for the wedding. wedding, and every gran uh, grandson, granddaughter also got mm. a, a, a as a kite. Mm. So we we have the design and we have the shape of the kite in place. We have the colors in place, yeah. but now we still need the step to the design. <coughs> well, the final part of okay, sewing is Shula's job. Yeah. As, a, as I say, I know how to use the sewing machine. I know the principles, I know the theory, but I can never get the same results when I sit at the sewing machine. You need something to be precise and proper. That's Shula's uh, he, job. I said that he can't blame himself, <laughs> that if something I, doesn't work. I, Shula said once that I cannot live up to my expectations when I do the sewing. So she does the sewing. When it comes to design the, the frame or the, or the sticks or the final shape of the kite, usually that's what I do. If we have to do some calculations involved in some geometry or algebra, that's my part. But uh, eventually everything comes together to create the final shape of the kite and then the final sail design of the kite. And then a normal ordinary kite from your house, how long does this take? A normal? Yeah, normal, yeah. <laughs> depends, I I, depends how you I'm define not sure, normal. I'm not, not sure if I can bandana. talk about normal kites not in your house. No, not, not a bandana. Not a bandana, no. Yeah, it would be like, uh, to, now we are retired, so yeah. we have more time. We mm. can spend the whole day sewing or making kites. I think it will be two or three. Probably will take between mm -hmm. maybe one or two weeks up to maybe a month. Okay. Yeah. And some, many times, a lot of the time dedicated to the planning, mm -hmm. yes. not necessarily the sewing. When yeah. it comes to the sewing, that's already easy because you know what you want to do. Yeah. Deciding on what you want to do and how to do it sometimes takes mm. uh, more time. And uh, people always ask us, how long does it take to make a kite? I don't know. I know what is the longest time it took us. And this is the bandana <laughs> behind us. Yes. And this took four months. Yeah. Oh, but we but, can, uh, <laughs> we can uh, talk about the geopointer or the box that we had the idea, we wanted mm. to do a kite, we had the plane, but we didn't know how, what design we want to, on it, what will be nice, what will fit. Mm -hmm. So we, I, I think two years or something, and people... Uh, no, the, the, the drum box took me, well, not every day, 24 hours a day, but I think it took me about a year to figure out what is the best way I want to do the, the, the design on, on the sail. Mm -hmm. To get like a continuous movement of the pattern and uh, do it a little bit different than other people do it. So it took me a while, but once I knew what I want to do, I don't think it took more than two weeks. 
And, and the geo pointer we got from Australia, uh, no, uh, no, from uh, John Trenopol from the US. US, mm. and again, we, we know that we want to do it, and some people even ask us, did you start, did, are you going to? <laughs> <laughs> and again, we didn't know what kind of design, because sometimes the shape is uh, strange or unusual, and uh, so even if you have an idea about the technique, it's mm. not always so like, like the geo pointer, it's a very long kite. It's five and a half meters long mm -hmm. by two meters wide uh, at the top. So how can you fit a design or a certain shape that will fit on this shape of the kite? This took us a long time. And here again was another example of involving the family. What I did, I printed in color the Works. basic block. The, the basic Lock. building block of the, of the kite. I printed it on paper, 80 or 90 blocks, cut them in okay. two centimeters by two centimeters. And then rearranged. And then started to arrange them on, on, mm -hmm. on paper. Yeah. And then we sent out to our grandchildren, okay, which one is the one that you like best? Mm -hmm. You like this one? This is nice, but, okay, no, I like this one. Moving and he, out of the picture. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just come over. Ah. <laughs> and eventually, the the final shape is one that uh, was agreed upon by all, by our kids and by our grand mm. uh, grandchildren. Yeah. So kite building is is a big part in your life. Yeah. Now the other part is traveling. Traveling, traveling and and, and, gra and grandchildren. <laughs> and grandchildren. <laughs> yes, because we are doing a lot of babysitter too. <laughs> How yes, many times a year are you out on, on oh. Kite Festival? <coughs> Usually, probably at least three or four times. I can tell Some years it's more, some years it's less, but... Uh, uh, we start in uh, April with uh, Chelvia most mm -hmm. of the time. If we don't go to India in January, we have... Sometimes we go to Berk and from Berk to Chelvia. Mm -hmm. If they overlap, we usually choose Chelvia. Mm -hmm. And then... Unlike this year, in June, we would uh, usually go to Alcochete in Portugal. Mm -hmm. And Dieppe in September, of every second year, we have Dieppe, Dieppe. in France. Mm -hmm. And, and there were a couple of years that there was, in August, Dieppe, Canada. Yes. And uh, then in October, there is Fréjus. Mm -hmm. So, probably I, three or four times a and year. And last year it was in September, Sydney, Australia. Oh, we went to, okay. to Bondi yeah. Beach. Yeah. Yes, and it was um, <laughs> one year in, I think it was March, that it was South Korea. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, so here and there uh, we can <laughs> squeeze some more festival, not the uh, regular ones, mm -hmm. because like I can say, Chervia, it's more than 20 years that we go. And so Chervia is your favorite? Yeah, spot? and I think it's Well, Chervia Festival a is the closest to home. Okay. Yeah. It's very easy yeah. to get yeah, for it's us. Very easy going. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like a, three and a half hours flight from Tel Aviv to Venice. Mm -hmm. I rent a car in Venice and within two hours I'm in Chervia. Yes. Also, it's a great festival. Mm -hmm an easy going it's a nice place most of the time it's very nice weather very nice people like every kind of very know. creative <laughs> people and very creative people and i i don't know maybe you can then cut it down but uh, like, it's also sometimes political because we were invited to a cut festival in turkey and it on a um, part of turkey that uh, um, the foreign office didn't recommend us to go over there. Okay. Yes, so there was a travel advisory. Yeah, so they said, we, we cannot prevent you from going to Turkey. But I, we I definitely that recommend that you don't go. I have been invited to that kite festival <laughs> as well. And both, both the Germans and the Danish said, um, let it be. Okay, <laughs> like, uh, like Claudio yeah. suggested us to come to Qatar. Yeah. And again, we, uh, <laughs> yeah. we can't go. So it's... Uh, <laughs> Not if Santa Claus is here and you have a wish, oh, wow. which kite festival in the world you need to participate or would you like to participate? Well, we would like very much to participate. I can think of two places, in China and, and or Japan. Mm -hmm. We haven't been there at all. We would like to visit there even without a kite festival, but with a kite festival it would be much preferred. Yeah. If some of our viewers here on the, on the, on the YouTube channel would like to start with kite building or would like to start with the paintwork? What you would you like to say? 
First, he needs to know how to sew. Yeah. Sewing <laughs> is important and uh, be precise. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can tell him that something that Ellie told me when we started, it's not a uh, dress, it's uh -huh. a kite, it yeah. must be accurate. And I said, oh, what do you mean? My dresses are... So the dresses are not accurate? <laughs> accurate. Or... No, okay, you can... You no, know, but they, the if kite... you do a dress, it's not critical if you miss by, uh, by a centimeter on one side. Sounds because... like an inflatable kite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, but it's uh, a kite, it will shift. If yeah. the kite shifts in the air, Ellie always will blend the sewing. So it must be very precise. So mm. first... Go and learn to so no. yes, and I uh, and then I would take go with a um, simple kite. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I don't know what a uh, maybe even a start uh, with, a diamond, with a delta or, or a diamond delta. because mm -hmm. you can use patchwork on any shape of kite because this is it, it doesn't matter what the shape of the sail is you can always fit some kind of patchwork and if you want to start simple. Probably log cabin would be the best uh, thing to start with. Yes, that's what we suggested the men and the, the were in the workshop and somebody that was very surprising that he said that he sort of was shock, in shock that he need to take the sale that he made at home, the, the, the homework that we mm -hmm. gave, uh, the squares that he sewed together and to cut it again. <laughs> How, it was terrible for him. So we said, and I, I said, I'm not going to do any patchwork. And I said, no, there are more techniques. So how about low cabin mm -hmm. that you, okay, you sew them, the, the stripe together, but you don't cut it anymore. So, yeah. <laughs> so we like the low cabin and we think that it's a, it's simple, mm. let's say, and you can play but with uh, colors. Uh, uh, also, I think I would say that uh, I would encourage people to have the mindset that Petrock designs, some of them look very complicated, but actually most of them are very simple to make. There's a simple way to make it, and the end result looks very complicated. Mm -hmm. there is a so people shouldn't thing. be afraid of it. Of course, you need either to look at books or to go to workshops. Shula goes to workshops for the Israeli Quilters Association. She always brings spinnaker with her. I start a so new she kite. starts a new kite at the workshop. Mm. I know Scott Skinner, he told us in secret that he goes to a ladies' workshop. Okay. To learn yeah. some new mm -hmm. techniques. <laughs> <laughs> but even, even from books, there are very, a whole variety of very good books about patchwork and, and quilt. And mm. now and now online also, you can uh, okay. yes, yes. Uh, see new techniques mm. or even step by step, step they will teach you. Many more. YouTube uh, videos. Do you have some tips and tricks on your homepage? In the homepage? No, nowhere. we on our site we only have photos okay. of yeah, it's only events and kites, either our kites or events we, we participate But if in. somebody will write or something we can recommend. Mm -hmm. and if somebody we, asks, we always yes. answer. We don't like, hide, we don't yeah. keep secrets. That on the workshop <laughs> I gave some tips yeah. about the sewing, uh, okay. yes, to make it uh, better. <laughs> yes. So if you guys outside there in the, in the, in the big World Wide Web, if you are interested in patchwork in particular, uh, in block having in particular, look around, uh, Google it. You'll find a lot of information out in the internet. Or as Alien Schuler said, just contact them. You will get here the, the address of the homepage um, underneath and then contact them. I think that was a very, very interesting talk to you guys. Thank you for coming to Fener. If I may add one more thing. Yes, of course. <laughs> it may not be politically correct, but we Doesn't were talking matter. earlier about the joy of kite flying. Yes. Now, unfortunately, what we note, experience in the last few weeks mm. is that the same kites that we were making as children, the hexagons from many, many years ago, that are still being flown by the Palestinian children are recently being flown from the Gaza Strip with incendiary and explosive devices mm. into the Israeli territory. What happens is, is the prevailing wind around the Gaza Strip are winds that are coming in from the west from the sea and they blow the direction of Israel. So they just put up a hexagon kite with a burning rag attached to the tail by a metal wire and they just 
cut the line, they let it go, it drops in the fields. All the area around the Gaza Strip is an agricultural area mm. and causes dozens and dozens and dozens of fires. And it's a pity. It's a pity that... Uh, it's definitely a pity, yeah. yeah. And then I, my, my first thought was, as I saw these pictures in news, how, how to answer on this. Yeah. So they the, are the first, very... my, my first thought was, ignore it. Don't, don't push something up. And then on the other side, um, Michael Stelzer from, from, from Berlin at that time, where, where, where Germany has been liberated, he had, he had a thought, and that was an Oashi height from, from western part of Berlin to the eastern part. And, and at that time I thought, hopefully, hopefully some, some intelligent Israelis and some intelligent the problem uh, Arabs will come <laughs> together and maybe make such, <laughs> make such an action. And this, I think, this will be the, the right reaction for, yeah. for this crap what they are that's doing. What, that's we, we're trying to organize something, as you say, against it, to, to, to yeah. oppose this. But uh, so far, it's a problem. Yeah, it's a major so problem. We said, okay, let's make peace. So yes. this will be the best solution. Well, the best solution is making peace, yeah, of course. But, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. but that will be especially in your area. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and the, the, and we that's what we say. We want a very good festival to mm. show other kites to people. The joy of <laughs> Because kites, it's yeah. now popular yes. kites, but not with a good reason. And the philosophy of kites yeah, and kites. Yeah. Yeah. Come together. Come together, be friends, have friends. a good time. Yes, yes. Because yes. it is just one world. And with this sense, with this last sentence from a very privileged Europe, from a very privileged island of Fene, I say thank you for watching us. Thank you that you two guys have been here for this really good interview, for this really good talk. And if you like this video, yeah, then please, one thumbs up underneath or much better, um, subscribe the whole channel. Thank you for now. Thank you for watching and see you soon again. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you for having us here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.